So I bought a GTX 980 Ti in 2024 and if I'm going to be honest with you lot, I've got no regrets at all. That's because I've tested this at 1080p, my testing PC and for the price you're going to be paying for one of these in 2024, I mean, the performance is not bad at all. The GTX 980 Ti is 2015's most powerful gaming graphics card if you disregard the Titan Enthusiast class, but back then this thing was an absolute monster and it's kind of hard to believe that this thing is getting on to almost 10 years old now. Yeah, I do feel old because I remember when these launched, but I scored an excellent deal on this Zotac Amp Extreme. I paid just £30 for it which is about $37 and apparently it had an issue where it would crash intermittently and I did not observe that at all. It ran totally fine for me particularly after a clean which you can watch in a video up there. But you can find one of these for around £60 to £80 on new sites like eBay depending on which model you go for. Models like this Zotac Amp Extreme usually go for a bit more than that but then again you're probably going to be getting better performance because just look at the size of the cooler on this thing. This thing's huge. But is the GTX 980 Ti worth its selling price on eBay? To find out the answer to that question I've tested it at 1080p in my testing PC which has a Ryzen 5 7600 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory clocked at 6400 MHz CL32, a 2 terabyte NVMe Gen 4 SSD built on a gigabyte B650M Gaming X AX motherboard. I've left the 980 Ti at its stock out of the box settings and I've also tested with the latest driver at the time of testing. I'll put it on the screen because I can never remember driver names them way too long. But without that being said, let's get this tested. Throwing the GTS 980 Ti in the deep end with Jedi Survivor on the low preset but I kept those textures on high and good news it's still got above 50 FPS on average and the 1% low by Jedi Survivor's sort of standards is really not that bad at 38 FPS. The GTX 980 Ti can play Jedi Survivor which in my opinion is one of the hardest AAA games to run right now which is great news. The 980 Ti isn't catching a break today because Cyberpunk 2077 is up next and we got the exact same average frame rate as Jedi Survivor but the 1% low was looking pretty decent trailing the average by just 7 frames per second. This was on the medium preset with the high textures so the game still looks quite good even at full HD but the performance might leave a little more to be desired. This is where I'd recommend doing some tweaks to your settings and you could probably pretty easily get above 60 fps on average so that's something i would recommend the gtx 980 ti gets a competitive frame rate in fortnite no bother getting just shy of 200 fps on average with a one percent low that's looking pretty great in fortnite standards so if you wanted a competitive 1080p gaming experience the 980 Ti is going to be fine in Fortnite and if you are after more frames the performance API is always an option as well. Hogwarts Legacy is a game which really surprised me today because on the medium preset the 980 Ti got above 70 FPS on average with a decent 1% low as well so yeah I mean if you wanted to play Hogwarts Legacy on a GPU as old as the 980 Ti, just know it's definitely playable. You can easily play as the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man because the 980 Ti on the high preset is getting some excellent performance here. Getting 76 FPS on average with a somewhat decent 1% low at 52 FPS. Do bear in mind this is while Spider-Man is web slinging and that does heavily impact especially the one percent lows but this is a worst case scenario for this game so performance might even get better from here on so can a nine-year-old high-end gpu play spider-man certainly there were no issues with f123 today on the medium preset 120 fps on average with a one percent low of just over 100 is excellent performance in my book and you'd be set for a competitive experience if you were to drop the preset down to low or very low there you'd be getting a lot of performance so 980 ti excellent performer 
God of War performs great on the high preset with the 980 Ti as it got north of 70 FPS and a 1% low, still getting above 60 FPS there as well. Because of this, if you wanted to play as Kratos with decent graphic settings, this old legendary GPU is still perfectly fine for it. And I don't foresee you having any issues running this classic. Doom Eternal is the final title up today and I really wanted to test the memory bandwidth of this GPU and on the Ultra preset, there were absolutely no issues. 109 FPS on average with a 1% low of 83 frames per second is what I call pretty decent performance in my book and when you're gaming on a GPU which costs around, I don't know, about 60 odd great British pounds, you can't really argue about this performance at all. This makes me think the 980 Ti is an absolutely epic graphics card as it's still got the horsepower to play a lot of games at 1080p. So for full HD gaming, I think the GTX 980 Ti is a very impressive graphics card. A lot of the games I tested today, well basically all of them actually, I was very impressed by the performance this was giving out. The only sort of downsides were the newer AAA games like Cyberpunk 2077, which does give anything pre-turing a bit of a hard time. Even then, that was on the medium preset with high textures, so you could always do some tweaking to get above 60 frames per second. In the case of Jedi Survivor, that only broke 50 frames per second as well, which to be honest, isn't the best performance in the world. However, it was more than playable in my opinion, and that was on the low preset with high textures, so there's not really that much tweaking you can do outside of using FSR. However, in a game as intensive as that, I think the 980 Ti put up a very good job. Moving on to the other games that I tested today and Spider-Man Remastered and Hogwarts Legacy were a breeze on a graphics card like this, so there's no issues there. You can run on the medium preset or in the case of Spider-Man on the high preset and still get more than 70 frames per second on average at full HD, so that's great right there. And of course, you're going to be set for a competitive experience at 1080p and maybe even 1440p in games like Rainbow Six Siege and Fortnite. And that means CSGO, Valorant, Rocket League, those sorts of games are going to be perfectly fine on this GPU. So essentially, the crux of it is, as long as you're not playing spaghetti code, messy, unoptimized games, the 980 Ti is still kind of fine at 1080p. And the reason why I say kind of is because there's a few sort of issues with this graphics card. Being based on the Maxwell architecture, which is, well, it's 10 years old now because it started with the 750 Ti, this means that Nvidia could drop game ready driver support any day now for these graphics cards and to be honest I'd be surprised if they didn't drop it this year which in all fairness supporting a GPU for about 10 years or 9 years in the case of this is actually quite long for the driver support is more than what AMD would probably be willing to provide but that's another story so that's one big issue right there. Also, this GPU consumes a ton of power, sapping more than 270 watts in my testing. So you'll be needing a beefy power supply. I recommend at least a 650 watt for a graphics card like this. So that's something to be known there. But if none of that concerns you and you mainly play older games and even newer games, to be honest, because this thing was totally fine in them, the 980 Ti, for around 60 to 70 pounds is really not that bad of a deal. Maybe you could probably stretch that to something like a GTX 1070, which does have two extra gigabytes of VRAM and it will be supported for longer. And it's on a God tier platform with the Pascal architecture, which is the best Nvidia's ever done. But if none of that really concerns you, you can get a good deal on one of these. I mean, the 980 Ti is still a brilliant graphics card and I'd go as far to say it's underrated and overshadowed by its successor, the God tier GTX 1080 Ti. So you can see how its predecessor, the GTX 780 Ti, gets on up there. Other than that though, I'm going to leave the video here and have a good rest of your day.